And we are right smack bang in the middle, or probably more toward the latter end of a series, uh, message series at our church called Our Feasting Life. And this is all about who we are as a church. We believe that all churches have been called to serve their community in a unique way that reaches the people that God has put in front of them to reach. And so at our church, we have what we call a life culture. And culture really is just the way we do things around here. And for us, our culture is one of life, which is actually an acronym, which stands for love, inspiration, fun, and excellence. And so when you encounter anyone from Beyond Church or in any room in the Beyond Church world, thanks, Kimmy. Good on you, Kimmy. I know you want me to move over here, don't you? Because that's going to really frustrate you later when you edit that YouTube video, isn't it? Hey, why don't you thank Kimmy? Because she does all the YouTube videos and stuff online, so I won't move it too much because you're going to come back later, so don't go too crazy. But, yeah, perfect. But um, if you want to catch up on any of these messages, because we've done about six of them, you've missed any of them, then guess what? Thanks to Kim Davis, you can go into YouTube. And, in fact, YouTube's probably the best place to catch up because YouTube has a curation of all the content in playlists and categories. And so you can go on and you can look at all of the, um, the series listed. So you can go back and find all the stuff really easily. So YouTube's probably the best place to do that. Podcasts are great, but you've got to scroll back through stuff. It's like, what was that message about? YouTube, it's like, what's, and it's got pictures. Who loves pictures? Visual learners in the room, hands in the air. Come on, that's me. And so that's on YouTube. So... And if you're not subscribed to YouTube, I mean, that's, you get notified then when the messages go up. I mean, that's probably even better. So why don't you subscribe to the YouTube? And what am I talking about? Let's get back onto this. <laughs> we are talking about our feasting life, a, a series about the culture, the way that we do things as a church around here to reach our community. And as a, a church, our year this year is marked with the theme, our feast which is about feasting on the goodness of God, no matter what the circumstances are that we find ourselves in, in 2024. And so we want to have a a culture or a way that we do things around here that is a model of kingdom on earth, heaven to earth. And so what we know is that cultures will always slide toward their lowest common denominator unless they're led to rise to their fullest potential. I've got that on the screen for you now. And this is important to note because what we've discovered and what you might know if you lead anything is that often things aren't working out just as you'd like them to in your family, in your marriage, with your friendship groups. And that's because unless it's attended to, the culture of the environment that you are in will always, on the screen, slide to its lowest common denominator unless it's led to rise to its fullest potential. That's what we know. But it's not just us that knows this. There it is there. This might be good for us today, but the Apostle Paul was the first person to address culture slide in the church because he was leading uh, a church, planted a church, and then leading it by correspondence before Zoom calls through letters to the church in Rome who were struggling with maintaining a heaven-on-earth culture in their church, struggling to maintain a kingdom culture within the life of their community. And so Paul wrote them a letter called Romans, funnily enough, and in chapter 12, verse 2, he says this to the church. He says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. The NIV says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world. He says, be inwardly transformed, it's important to underline that word, transformation, by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. And this will empower you to discern God's will or God's way or God's culture or God's methods, God's kingdom, God's heavenly way here on earth. It will help you to understand what it looks like to live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in the eyes of God. So what Paul is saying is if we want to live a kingdom culture life, a heaven on earth kind of life for our homes, our churches, our families, our marriages, our workplaces, our businesses, all of our endeavours and vocations, then we must be able to be transformed inwardly so that what's on the outside is impacted by the culture of heaven at work in our lives. And so at Beyond Church... We work hard to bring heaven to earth in this way. 
And we encourage every person who calls themselves a part of Beyond Church not to just talk about the culture that we want to see brought to bear in our world and community, but we want to call people to, be, to bring the culture, to be life bringers, to bring love, to be inspirational people, to be the kind of people that are okay to have a bit of fun. I mean, does anybody in the room like to have just a little bit of fun from time to time? Yeah, we've got three people in the room. They're going to have a lot of fun in 2024. Low bar, that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. We can, we can work toward a room full of fun and we say that we want to bring excellence. And excellence isn't being the best or perfection. Excellence is simply doing the best with what we have. One of the great, uh, one of the uh, very prolific writing uh, writers and business leaders about culture is a guy called Peter Drucker. He's written heaps of books about culture. He's from, uh, not, he's from a previous generation, a bit older than me. And he says this about culture. He says, only three things happen naturally in organisations. Friction, confusion and underperformance. Everything else, everything else requires leadership. Everything else needs to have a culture shift. Otherwise, there's friction, there's failure or underperformance and confusion. Now, if you're married in the room... You don't need me to prove this to you. Because left unattended, you're going to find that when you walk into that door of an afternoon, or get up out of bed in the morning, you'll find without any work on, of yours, on, it's there, friction, confusion. <laughs> and so we need to address that. Not just in our marriages, but in the relationships we have with our children, our work colleagues, the businesses we lead, the opportunities we are saying yes to, relationships we have. We need to bring life, culture, heaven to earth culture into our world. And so today I felt strongly not to speak to one of those specific cultural norms, not specifically to love, which we've talked about, or inspiration, or fun, or excellence. And Sam brought a message about that a couple of weeks ago. Again, you can find that on YouTube or on the podcast. I felt really strongly as I went to God about today's message that he wanted me to share a message with our church and wider community for those that engage with us in that way that empowers us to be cultural change agents that equips us with the tools that we need to shift the culture of our world to reflect the kingdom of heaven. Because yes, we want to bring love, we want to bring inspiration, we want to bring fun, we want to bring excellence, but I also want to know how do we shift culture? How do we, how do we move from where we are if things aren't where they need to be, if things aren't loving, if there's lovelessness or if there's uninspired living or if there's despondency and discouragement or if there's underperformance? Uh, is there a, what, what can I do to change culture? It's okay to know what it should look like, but can you help me? Help me know what to do to be the kind of person that can bring heaven to earth in my world. How can I be the kind of person that shifts the culture so it reflects the kingdom of heaven on earth? That's what I want to know. And that's what I felt like God put on my heart to bring to us today as a church. And here's the first question I have to ask before I do that. Are you ready for questions? Actually, you don't have to be ready for the question. Are you ready to give an answer? All right, all the school teachers are leaning forward. Here we go. The question is this. Who is responsible for the joy in your family? Who is responsible for the culture, the atmosphere in your marriage? Or the culture in your workplace? Or the capacity of your team? Who is responsible? Who is responsible for the spiritual growth in your life or the level of of your leadership, who is responsible for the culture in your life and the world around you? Well, let me help you answer that question. Galatians, I know questions are like one of the, you never want to answer a question that's posted from a platform because it's like, it's a trick question. Everybody knows it's a trick question, but some people have to answer questions, trick questions or otherwise, and I'm one of those people who's like, I know the answer. And then I get fooled and I'm like, no, oh, it got me. So here is an encouragement from, again, Paul, the Apostle Paul, church planter, pioneer, church leader, speaking to the church, the Galatian church, again on this same issue. 
about responsibility and culture. He says this. He says, let everyone, everybody say everyone. everyone. Now, if you didn't say that, that you, you don't understand what everyone means. Let's get that right. Everyone say everyone. everyone. That's right. Let everyone be devoted to fulfill the work God has given them to do with excellence and their joy will be in doing what's right and being themselves and not in being affirmed by others. You know, sometimes when you want to bring culture shift, you're going to have to be okay with not being affirmed by others who are living counterculturally to the kingdom. You might have to be okay with people disagreeing with your opinion, your view, or the methods in which you want to see things change, because we've got to be okay with not being affirmed by others, but being affirmed by the king of the kingdom, and his name is Jesus. And so Paul knows this. He says, guys, stop worrying about what everybody else thinks of you. Every believer, everyone, every believer is ultimately responsible for his or her own conscience, her own belief her own worldview, her own behaviours. Every person is responsible for their own conscience. So the question is, who is responsible? And the answer is, come on, you guys. I've made you really nervous. (laughs) You can't answer now. Good question. Everyone is responsible for doing the work God has called them to do. In your workplace, you're responsible. In your marriage... You are responsible. In your family, you are responsible. Your spiritual growth, your professional growth, the culture of your life, you are responsible. Recently, Rachel and I went away a couple of, well, like 12 days ago or something. We've been away for 11 nights. Before we go away on a long trip, we like to, well, I like to, and Rachel likes to, have the house as clean as possible. Who else is like this? So when you come back from a big, long, restful break, you don't walk in to a nuclear explosion. It's like, what has happened to this place? When I left, it was beautiful. You, you, know, you, you see your house through rose-coloured glasses while you're in it. You go away for it, come back. Who's, I've gone, I'm at the wrong address. Like drive down the driveway. This is not. Is this short? It's, that's not the grass that I left here. The kitchen sink wasn't full of dishes. Was that right? Is that right? So we like to leave the house pristine. So you walk in and you're shocked by how clean it is. So I'm, I can, I'm, a, I'm militant about it before we go on holidays. Polish the benches, guys. Mop the floors. So we're not even going to be here for a week. Doesn't matter. Come on. Because when you walk in the door and you walk in and the sparkle burns your eyes. Like, oh, wow, the smell of bleach is still in the atmosphere. It's like, yes, this is a brand new house. Woo! Anyway, the kids' bedroom's another story. Close the doors on those. <laughs> but so we were getting, like I was getting into that zone a few weeks ago. And I thought, oh, I've got a lot of stuff done. And then I started thinking, well, let's look at the garage. I haven't cleaned the garage for a while. In fact, we had a renovation like ages ago and we put a lot of stuff in there and we haven't really done much with it. But the garage clean out. I mean, anyone here love getting into the garage clean out? Yeah, you guys, the Bunnings, everyone who loves to go to Bunnings loves a garage clean out. And I love a good, good, good old fashioned garage clean out. And in the cleaning out, when you have a family of six, you, you really just can't throw everything out. I've tried that before. <laughs> oh, Luke, where's that Bible that I got when I was baptized in 1989? Oh, I don't know. Go on. Where did you put it? Oh, I can't remember. Well, if you don't know where it is, it mustn't be very important here. I thought I'd put it in my special like, box of important things in the garage. No. Actually, in fact, true story. When Rachel and I got married, this is, this is, pre, this is pre-internet, pre-mobile phones, pre-text. We got married when you used to communicate with each other by letters. And so Rachel went to Vanuatu at uh, the start of Year 12 because you know, we met at school, and I thought we were kind of going out. Uh, Rachel didn't think we were going out, and that's a whole other story which we can talk about later. And while she's in Vanuatu, I wanted to communicate with her every day, so I would write a letter to her every day. She was gone for two weeks, four weeks. Yeah, that's RSI. I've still got RSI. So, but I'd write a letter, some days two letters in the morning, afternoon, 
right, the send them all. You know, and also, Rachel, when she got back from Vanuatu, we kind of became going out at some point along, that, along the road there. But then we sh- she would start writing me letters and we'd have all these letters. And so when we got married, we kept all these letters and we put them in a box. And we put the box in the garage. And after about three years of marriage, we've moved a few times. I said, Rachel, what are we moving all these letters around for? I mean, we're married. We've done the letters. Like, we understand what they all mean. You love me, I love you. We've written it all down. We've put it in a box. Three years later, we've got to carry this every time we move house. Throw it out. If we want to tell each other we love each other, we'll just write, send new text messages. So she said, oh, no, we'll just keep it for a bit longer. And so a few years later, moving around again. So fast forward, we've been married for 25 years this year. And when I was cleaning the garage this time, I came across the letters again. And occasionally I'll open one up and read it and cry and, you know, get in touch with my romantic side and then put it back in the box with the romantic side. And I found the letters again and this time I was like, we are not throwing out those letters. 25 years, we're not throwing out those letters. And in cleaning up a room, like a garage or cleaning up a place that we're going to reside in, there are things that we can immediately just throw out, discard. There are some things that we have to negotiate on as a family. What are we going to keep? What are we going to throw out? And there are some things that we know we should never throw away. And so when it comes to the rooms in our life, the room here in this church, the room that's in here of our heart, the the, the room in our life groups if we host life groups, or the the marriage, the room that's our marriage, or the room that's our family. When it comes to those places, any conversation we might have, any team meeting you might have, any work experience you might be curating, when it comes to those things, you can change the culture of that environment by what you choose to bring into it and what you choose to leave out of it. Some things you want to throw out straight away, some things you need to negotiate, and some things need to stay no matter what. And so at Beyond Church, we say, we, we teach our team this, that if it's your room, it's your responsibility. If it's your room, it's your responsibility. When it comes to the house of God, his church, your life, it is your responsibility to shift culture. You know, the Bible puts it like this in 1, Corinth, 1 Chronicles 29 verse 2, which is the inauguration uh, ceremony of the, of the temple, the commissioning or anointing of the temple of God after David had built Uh, Solomon had built the temple. And it says this, this is not just a place, talking about the temple of God, this is not just a place for people to meet each other, but a house for God to meet us. So there's there's something different about the culture that you curate when you are a person of God. It's not just a place where we do interactions and meetings and caudal connections. This is a divine, spiritual encounter with God and each other. And so it matters what culture looks like. And so I want to encourage us with these few things that that are going to show us what we must bring to the room for culture to shift. The things we must bring to the room, not leave out. These must remain. Are you ready for these? Don't throw these away. The first one is this, confidence. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 says this, So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. We do need to know who we are in God and what we've been called to do. Do you know who you are? Are you confident that you are called by God for his purpose in your life and the lives in which you've been entrusted to care for? Come on, do you know who you are? Are you confident when you walk into the room? Are you confident when you walk into a conversation with your partner? Are you confident when you, when you sit your children down and tell them that's just not the way we do things around here. Are you confident when you engage with your friends and family or your colleagues or your church family? Are you confident? Come on, that's a good question to answer with a a big yes, if that's you. And I do want to just this morning prophesy confidence in every single heart and life because I know that over the last season, confidence, particularly in the life of those who are serving in the local church, has been stripped away. But this is not a season to lack confidence because God's calling you to significant work for him and his kingdom here on earth. So come on, this is your day to to shake off a a lack of confidence in your life and step into a fresh new confidence in what God's called you to bring into every room of your life. Confidence. Number two, faith. Psalm 65 verse 5. I love these verses. Every morning 
I've got a, a, my morning kind of ritual, and I read these verses every morning. Psalm 65 verse 5 says this, You answer our prayers with awe-inspiring wonders and displays of power. Come on, we've got to bring faith into the room. Can you imagine what the Lord can do with all of the faith in the room? Again, I want to prophesy of every single person in this room today who are, who, who's feeling faithless or discouraged. Come on, this is your morning to let faith rise for you, for your marriage, for your family. Come on, for your hopes and dreams, the desires that God has put on your heart that have maybe laid dormant or felt like they've died in the last season. This is your morning to step into a new level of faith. Believe God again and pray the kind of prayers that only God can answer. Come on, he, he answers our prayers, what, with uninspiring wimpers and whims of maybe you should have or could have. He answers our prayers with awe-inspiring displays of power. And 66 verse 5 Psalms it says again, everyone will say, man, I want this to be your life. This is what I want to pray over your life, that this would be your story about you. Everyone will say, come and see the incredible things God has done for Gary. Come and see the incredible things God has done for Ronan. Come and see the incredible things God has done for Natalie. Put your name in there. Come and see the incredible things God has done. It will take your breath away. He multiplies miracles for his people. Come on. He's got more than enough for you. Oh, I'm not sure if I should pray and ask God for that miracle. You know, he's been so good and so faithful to me over the years. Miracle after miracle after miracle is the nature and character of God. And he wants to pour them into your life more than you can contain. You serve the God of abundance. It's time to let go in 2024 of a scarcity mindset that's been holding you back and step into an abundance mindset where you know your God is the God of all things over heaven and earth. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever hope or imagine. So come on, let faith rise in your spirit today. Thirdly, Bring the right atmosphere into the room. You know, I've had, over my life, I've had a few air conditioners installed. I've got an air conditioning expert in the room as well, Gary. And so the air conditioning expert installs the air conditioner, but he doesn't really change the atmosphere of the room. The air conditioner, once it's installed, can sit on the wall, but doesn't really change the atmosphere in the room put the power to the machine, put the remote on the wall. But nothing changes the atmosphere until somebody flicks the switch and adjusts the temperature. The temperature, the atmosphere of the rooms in which you want to see the kingdom of heaven displayed. You have the responsibility to shift the atmosphere, to change the temperature. And it's not just temperature, not just spiritual temperature. It's things like what's the sound of your room? When we talk about shifting culture, what does culture sound like? What does love sound like? What does fun sound like? What does excellence sound like? Come, what does your marriage sound like? What's the language coming out of your mouth to your spouse? What does it sound like? What does it sound like when your kids speak to each other or speak to you? In your workplace, what does it sound like when you speak to your colleagues or your team members or your team leader? Come, what does it sound like? Is it sound? Does it sound like heaven on earth because you can change the atmosphere by what you bring into it. What does it smell like? Do you carry the the scent of heaven on your life? What does it taste like? You're the kind of person that's generous with your words, with your hospitality. I wonder what it would be like to be in heaven around the table with Jesus. Would it be stingy, withholding? No, no, abundance, more than enough, generous hospitality. Come on, the culture of your home, the culture of your community can reflect the kingdom of heaven this year. You can change the atmosphere. And finally, the most important thing to bring into the room, to change the culture, to shift the culture in any environment, opportunity, vocation, relationship that you find yourself in in 2024 is this, Jesus. The Sunday school answer for everything. And it is always correct. It is Jesus. You know, that verse there that says, I read earlier, this is not just a place for people to meet each other, but a house for God to meet us, the temple. You know, that was just a shadow, a type or a foretaste of Jesus himself. In fact, in Revelation, the last book of the Bible, when we begin to wrap it all up, 
as we're doing right now. The Bible says in uh, Peter's vision on the island of Patmos, he says, I saw no temple in the city for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Jesus. If we want to change all of the rooms in our life to reflect the kingdom of heaven, heaven on earth, this is what we see. It's not a physical shift, but it's a shift in a relationship with Jesus. Have you allowed Jesus to occupy your life? The Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Have you allowed Jesus to shift you? (laughs) Can I encourage you? Don't try and start shifting anyone else's life until you've had yours shifted. Because you're going (laughs) to, come on. (laughs) It starts here first with Jesus, right here. You know, if you are unfamiliar with what it is to have a relationship with Jesus, then this morning, today is your day to change that change the culture of your life to reflect heaven. But there are other people I know in the room who who know of Jesus and maybe knew Jesus well for some time, but have drifted from an intimate relationship with Him where you you know that you aren't really a a temple of the Holy Spirit anymore. There's something gone on inside of you that's, that's, that's shifted Jesus to the sideline. Well, guess what? You're in the right place at the right time. Because today is your day to align your life with Jesus. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, you know, our prayer today is that 2024 would be a year that shifts something in your life so that you can see the world around you change forever. But it has to start with you. Your room, your responsibility. If you're in the room today and you need to say yes to Jesus for the first time, just shoot your hand up in the air straight away. Be bold, be brave. Say, yeah, that's it. That's me. I know that. I need to change. I need Jesus to come and change me. And if you're in the room today, again, as I said, and you feel as though you may have drifted away from where Jesus needs you to be in this season, in this year, come on, why don't you raise your hand as well? Just in this moment of privacy where you can just commit to God and say, yeah, that's me. Yes, anybody else? Come on, lift your hand high. All right, just wrap Put your hands down. Let me just pray this prayer over you. And if you pray this prayer in your heart, can I encourage you to see our team at the next step stand after the service. Don't leave without letting someone know that you've prayed a significant prayer today that's going to change your destiny. Don't just walk out. Come on, we've got a great team who love, who want to show their love to you and encourage you about this decision. Come on, for everybody together this morning, we're going to pray this prayer. Lord God, we thank you for heaven on earth. We thank you you sent Jesus to us. We thank you that he showed us the way to live and to change our world. And Today I pray that you would help me open my heart to receive Jesus afresh. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, church. Thanks, Rach.